Where's Mo? You were there. I have to know what it was like. The colors, the smells, the magic. I'm sorry, it's just so exciting. You went into the Fade. <clears throat> if you have time, Inquisitor, do tell. You seemed excited that I fell into the Fade at Adamant. Excited? Spring gets me excited. This is a wonder. It's probably hard to relate, but dwarves don't dream. So I can't even guess what it's like. I can't even understand what dreams are. But you were there. And came back. Can I take a sample? A sample? Oh, that sounded sinister. I meant, can I cut a little piece off of you and do things to it? That didn't sound better, did it? <laughs> have to say, Dagna, this is strange. You don't have to tell me. All the rules are breaking. And I've broken plenty, so I know. Hmm. Your people cleaned you up after your fall. I wonder if anything is left. So much to think about. We've an interesting development, Inquisitor. A petition from citizens of Valroyo. They... wish to know what Andraste said to you in the Fade. They think she spoke to me. Even Leliana can't trace the rumor's origin. It may be expedient to respond to those asking for Andraste's words. It's not Andraste who saved me. Few people outside Skyhold know it was Divine Justinia who delivered you from the Fade. You could attempt to tell Valroyo citizens the truth, though it may not be as inspiring as they hope. The Inquisition won't answer their petition, that's all. They will be disappointed, but rumor will eventually fill in words for us. Let us hope they stay within reason. <sighs> You have remarkably little here on early to winter history. All these gifts to the Inquisition, and the best they can do is the Malefica Imperio, trite propaganda. But if you want 20 volumes on whether Divine Galatea took a shit on Sunday, this is evidently the place to find it. And that's the Dorian I know, critiquing every book in my library. I wouldn't have to if you could find some rebellious heretic archivist to join the cause. Are there rebellious archivists? Other than you, that is. If Corypheus ever starts burning masterworks of literature, I'm sure a few will pop up. Did I see something by Genitivi here? I could have sworn. What is this about, Dorian? When everyone returned, they told us about your tumble into the Abyssal Rift. You went into the Fade. Physically went in. Are you... all right? I learned a surprising amount. What happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, for one. Regained your memories. That's good, then. I think so. You do realize this feat hasn't been performed in over a thousand years. Corypheus and his contemporaries entered the Fade and began the Blights. In comparison. So... I should be happy I accomplished something so grand. Concerned, more like. If you can walk in the Fade, others will try to follow. Who knows what secrets Corypheus has revealed? Not all of them will be as lucky as you. What they could unleash. My advice? Keep this quiet. Let them speculate. Too many will see this as a challenge. That's a good idea. There are enough idiots in the world who think if they just use enough blood magic, their problems will vanish. It's exactly the sort of thing I want to stop back home. This... this I don't need. What I do need is a copy of the Liberalum. I'll wager I can find Corypheus' real name. If I can prove he was a grasping ankle biter with no family to speak of, the luster would come right off. Wish me luck. You walked physically through the Fade. Please tell me what you remember. I've heard stories about the dangers of the Fade, but I've never actually seen them before. No one else has physically entered the Fade since the Magisters assaulted the Golden City. Oh, I'm positively envious right now. Inquisitor, the soldiers say you banished the demons at Adamant and freed the Grey Warden mages. 
I understand from Sister Leliana that the truth is somewhat more complex, but no less extraordinary. She said that you spoke with a figure in the Fade that seemed to be the soul of divine Justinia. I suspect many of the faithful would like to know what Justinia told you. She helped me remember what happened at the Conclave. The Maker didn't give me the mark on my hand. I was struck in battle. And Andraste didn't send me. The figure everyone saw was Divine Justinia. Ah. And how do you feel about what you have learned? I don't have time to dwell on it. We have a war to fight. Then I will save my own ruminations upon faith and belief, and simply pray for your success, Inquisitor. It is wise that you do not let what happened in the Fade spread, however. Some would not understand. Now, is there anything I can help you with? Farewell, revered mother. Make her go with you. Writing does not come naturally to me, as I'm certain you can imagine. Let me guess, you're composing a love poem. I couldn't, not even if my life depended on it. It's not that hard. Yes, it is. Poetry takes finesse, it takes grace. You don't think you have those things? Historians will one day ask what happened at Adamant Fortress, in the Fade. I wasn't there, but others were. Their accounts must be recorded. That's an excellent idea, Cassandra. I certainly thought so, until I started writing. I still don't know what to say about the spirit of the Divine. The Chantry teaches us that the souls of the dead pass through the Fade, so it could have been her, yet even so. Do you really think it might have been her? A ghost? A ghost. A remnant of her hopes and memories. Her lingering will to do good. Those things are all possible. Nobody knows for certain what happens after we die. A spirit could have assumed her form, but why? It helped you, as Justinia herself would have. I believe it was the Divine. She helped us one last time. I hope that's true. I want to believe it. When they told me you were physically in the Fade, I was terrified for you. The last time such a thing happened, we created Darkspawn. We created Corypheus. The world needs to know the truth this time. No more legends lost to the ages. I trust all is well. I want to talk to you about the cure for tranquility. It's not a cure. Not truly. Mages who were once tranquil lose all control over their emotions. They become irrational, unable to focus. Perhaps that state eventually passes and they can be helped, but it will take time to investigate. There are so many tranquil. They deserve a chance to heal. I would not want news of a cure to spread until we know for certain we can help these people. Once we have that, however, then I will spread the word myself. I have some more questions. As you wish. Tell me about your brother. Anthony was older than I, a dragon hunter, who showed what a pentagast could truly be. I idolized him. I wanted to hunt dragons as he did, even though our uncle forbade it. Anthony promised to train me in secret. We would hunt together one day, brother and sister, vanquishing the beasts of old. And then he died on me. That sounds really awful. It was the end of everything I knew. A group of apostates wanted dragon blood, and wanted Antony to get it for them. He refused, and they killed him for it. 
in front of me. I begged the Chantry to let me become a Templar. Instead, they sent me to the Seekers. It took many years to let go of my drive for vengeance. I think I understand how you felt. At times I could not breathe. The rage nearly choked me. I sometimes wonder how different my life would be if Antony was still alive. Would I be a dragon hunter? Married to some noble fool, a mother of three? I cannot say. I take solace in believing the Maker has a plan, but he is not always kind. I'll let you get back to work. Commander Cullen did good work at Adamant. Breached those walls like he'd done it a dozen times. Nice job with the demons, by the way. Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the Chargers? You sealed the main rift at Adamant, but the fortress is still a mess. Demons, Darkspawn, making knows what. I can take Rocky out there with some of the boys. They know how to bring down walls. We can't close rifts, but we can bury the bastards under a ton of rubble. We'll talk later. Again. Again. Come on. This is why the Kuhn doesn't like women fighting. I should have asked Cullen. Good one. Perhaps you can take over. Gunari training exercise to master your fear. Been a while since I needed it, but that nightmare demon was... <sighs> big. Can you explain why I'm supposed to hit you with this stick? Probably, if I try. It'd involve a lot of Kunari words, though. Just hit me with the stick, all right? I need to get over this demon crap. All right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn demon! Ah! Who's stuck in the fade, huh? Ah! That nightmare wanted to tear you in half! Ah! Not a chance! Piece of fade, piece of crap! Ah! And who killed you? Ah! That's right! Iron fucking ball! Ah! Oh! Ah, oh, I needed that. Thanks, boss. And that works for you? <sighs> yep. All right, then. You're doing good work, boss. I like how this Inquisition is coming. Next time you're free, why don't you come grab a drink? I'll introduce you to the Chargers. Can you tell me more about Saharon? It was a damn ugly place. Only getting uglier when I left. Between the Fog Warriors, the Talrashath, my people, and the Vince, you were lucky to go a day without blood. <sighs> what do you want to know? What were the Fog Warriors like? They were the worst of the rebels. They trained for stealth attacks. They made this fog. I never saw any mages, so I figured it was alchemy, not magic. They were almost invisible in it. I'd be on patrol in the market square. The fog would roll in, and before I knew it, half my squad dead without a sound. It almost sounds like you admire them. They didn't use poison. They didn't hurt civilians, and they were damn good fighters. You have to respect that. Plus, they hit the Vince as hard as they hit us. Hearing some terrified magister scream, My slaves! Where are my slaves? And the fog always put a smile on my face. Tell me about the Talvashoth. When Kanari can't handle the fighting in Saharan or lose faith in the Kuhn, they go rogue. They flee into the wilderness and turn into bandits, attacking everyone. They're vicious, savage. You look at them and you can see why my people needed the Kuhn to stay civilized. Isn't that what you did, though? Hey, when I burned out, I didn't go rogue. I reported in and went where the Ben Hasrath sent me. I'm doing my job, serving the Kuhn out here. I'm not some bandit. I am nothing like them. 
Tell me about the Tevinta people you fought. The Vince sent forces to Saharan every autumn. Guess they didn't like the summer heat. We had some good fights on the beaches, standing in knee-high water foaming red with blood, ships on fire around us. The cities were worse. Free bit of advice. Don't let the Inquisition forces get suckered into urban combat. Why do you hate to vent forces so much? What makes them so bad? It's not their armies. It's their spies. They bloodied Saharan year-round, killing loyalists, supporting rebels. Alam had no city administrator. Nobody would accept a position. The last four who held it died inside a year. Trying to conquer a country is one thing. Making it so nobody can live there? That just screws everyone. What are things like for the natives of Saharan? I remember one guy. He made these things, fish wrapped in thin bread. Nice guy. Talk to him every morning. So, one time I'm asking about his bad back, and I see he's nervous, trying to tell me something with his eyes. Next thing I know, his assistants draw knives and come at my team. The rebels had forced him to poison my food. <clears throat> I'd seen how nervous he was, so I hadn't eaten anything. A couple of my guys weren't so lucky. We killed the rebels. I lost two men to the poison, another to knife wounds. My friend who made the fish wraps died with a knife in his throat. Close quarters fight. He was caught in the middle. That is what things are like for the natives of Saharan. You said we should go get some drinks and meet your company. Yeah, come on. It'll be fun. Ah, good. We're not drinking alone. How you doing, creme de la creme? Your worship. I'm so glad he has someone new to hit with that joke. I can think of worse places to go with Cremisius. So can the chief, believe me. He loves his nicknames. Hey, when I was growing up, my name was just this series of numbers. We all give each other nicknames under the Kuhn. They ever wear shirts under the Kuhn, chief? Or do they just run around binding their breasts like that? It's a harness, Krem. Yes, for your pillowy man bosoms. Let me know if you need help binding. You could really chisel something out of that overstuffed look. Who are the others? A lot of the Chargers went looking off for stronger drinks. Let's see, who's left? We've got Rocky and Skinner there. And over there are Stitches, Dalish, <laughs> and Grim. Crazy bunch of assholes, but they're mine. Were you born on the surface, or are you from Orzammar? Orzammar? I got exiled. Stupid noble crap. Also, I accidentally blew up a bit of the shape rate. Rocky's one of our best sappers. He can take down enemy fortifications faster than a golem. I'm also working on my own version of Kunari Black Powder. I've almost got it. Yeah, you really don't. Why aren't you with your clan? Our keeper thought I should see the world a little. Dalish don't have Templars, so they can't have too many mages in a clan at once. Now, sir, you know I'm not a mage. That'd make me an apostate. You carry a staff, Dalish. It's a bow. A bow with a giant glowing crystal at the tip. Yes, it's for aiming. Old elven trick you wouldn't understand. I take it you're the company healer. Yes, first time I ever picked up a sword was when the blight hit Ferelden. Never put it back down. He makes a potion that'll put you right back on your feet after even the toughest fight. It tastes terrible, though. That's because it's a poultice, sir. You're not supposed to drink it. So, how'd you join the charges? Killed some people. Skinner didn't take kindly to nobles testing their new swords on the elves in her alienage. Bull took me in. Now I get paid to kill Shams. This is actually really good behavior for her. She's not marking her territory or anything. Grim, is it? Hmm. <clears throat> Grim doesn't talk much. I'm pretty sure he's the lost king of some small country, or a chieftain, something like that. Hmm. <clears throat> you really take in anyone, don't you? Anyone who can carry their weight in a fight. And who can put up with your bullshit, chief? Man can beat the Chargers, cause we'll hit you where it hurts. Unless you know what's happened with the Star 
cowards and losers curse. For every bloody battlefield will gladly raise a cup. No matter what tomorrow holds, our horns be pointing up. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, boss. Glad you could meet some of my team. Your worship. I wanted to talk about you, if that's all right. You know, I'm from Tevinter. Wasn't a slave, but even citizens have it rough if they're not majors. I was a soldier, but women joined the ranks under a different program. When they found out I was passing, it got ugly. I ran, met Ball near the border, and ended up here. Not a life I'd wish on everyone, but it'll do. Why did you decide to live as a man? I didn't decide anything. I've been like this my whole life. My parents wanted me to marry up. They tried to find me a nice merchant's son. Every day, put on a dress, look into my father's shaving mirror, and just hate myself. How did your family react when you started? My mother wanted to throw me out. She said if I didn't marry well, I was dooming the family to slavery. She was happy to take the money I set as a soldier, though. Not that it mattered in the end. My father. When I was little, he'd angle his mirror down so I could pretend to shave, just like him. He never said anything, but I think he knew. If you had the chance to use magic, would you change all the way? What? No. I don't want any magic like that within ten yards of my body. When I was younger, I... Ah, I don't know. Everyone has silly dreams. In Tevinter, dreams like that get you killed. Bull helped me make a good life. Nice armor and a well-placed sock, and I'm happy. What's Tevinta like for a citizen, someone who isn't a slave or a mage? I'm of the separati, citizens who aren't mages. Mages are in charge and everyone knows it, but a wealthy merchant can have an easy life. At the low end, people just try to stay out of slavery. My father was a tailor. I joined the army after the Imperial slaves drove him under. How did slaves drive your family out of business? My father made shirts, aprons, that kind of thing. Nothing fancy. One of the magisters had a pet project to prevent the poor from dying of cold in the winter. Nice, right? He had Imperial slaves making simple peasant clothes and selling them for almost nothing. That Magister's nice idea put out slave-made clothes at prices my father couldn't match. It sounds like the Magister was doing it out of kindness. That's the worst part of Tevinter. People don't even realize they're taking away your living. That Magister wasn't a terrible person. He probably saved slaves from dying. My father sold himself into slavery. He's one of the service publicus. The Imperium owns slaves now. You said you left Tevinter when they discovered your secret. Women are allowed to serve, but only in certain ranks and disciplines. I was up for promotion, but the healer I'd bribed to sign off on my physical had to tend to a sick magister. When the replacement healer saw what was or wasn't in my pants, he made threats. It was slavery or death, so I knocked him out and ran. It's against the law to pass as a man. It's a crime to lie on an Imperial application for service. Would have been a heavy fine or slavery. For ten silvers, the healer said he'd tell the Tribune I was sick in the head. Some pity for the mad little girl. That was when I hit him. I'd served for a few years. I was good at hitting. I'm surprised you escaped from the Tevinter Imperium so easily. It's not like I lived in Minrathas. I was in Trevis, not far from the Navarran border. It helped that I was being chased as a deserter, not a runaway slave. Slave hunters only get paid for what they catch. They're efficient bastards. We'll talk later. Hey, that elven redhead who makes the buns in the kitchen. Is she available? Because I'm getting signals. I'd like to hear more about the charges. Always happy to talk about my guys. What do you want to know? How did you start the group? It's easy to make a name for yourself as a merc when you're a head taller than most folks. I spent a year or two working for Fisher's Bleeders, but their captain was crap. Figured I could do better. The best folks in the Bleeders agreed with me, so we split off. I imagine Fisher disagreed. <laughs> he came at me. I snapped his sword in half, and we talked things out over drinks. What are the craziest jobs you've ever taken? Besides this one, <laughs> there's a lot of violence between the nobles here, but that's standard work. The fun stuff is when they party. 
They always want to impress each other, and that means getting something shiny. We've hunted Weavens, fought through caves to find some old magical crap. Even when giant baiting once. What's giant baiting? So this old guy, Comte Van Chess, has some kind of a pageant planned. But he needs a giant, which is off in some damn cave. He's got some kind of rare charm to control the giant, but no way he's going into that cave himself. So we go in, kill some spiders, find the giant, and wake it up. It attacks us because of course it does, and we let the big bastard chase us outside where Van Chess is waiting. That was actually your plan, to let a giant chase you? Yeah. We had to stay out of reach, but close enough that it wouldn't give up. It was tricky. Good news is the giants are slow. Long as my guys ahead could clear out the spiders, we were fine. Bad news is the giant spiderwebs slow you down a bit more than you think. But at least Comte Van Chess got his giants for the pageant. Eh. Turned out that charm was a phony. Giant ate the poor guy alive. It's okay, though. We still got paid. You have people from plenty of different backgrounds in your group. Yes, well, when you're in Orlais and you look like me, you can't be picky about who you take in. A lot of them got turned away from other companies that didn't want a knife here, or a crazy dwarf. Their loss. You get my back in a fight and carry your own weight, you're good with me. I'd like to know more about Krem. He's a good soldier, and a better second in command. The troops need someone to complain to when I'm being a hard ass. He's good for that. You don't have any problems with him being a woman? He's not a woman. Look, I've got horns, you've got pointy ears and those freaky big elf eyes. We're probably not the best people to go around deciding what's normal. Krem's a good man. I don't give a nug's ass that it's a little harder for him to piss standing up. You don't have a problem with him being from Tevinta? Nah. But you hate the Vince. Sure, but he's not a Vint. He's just Krem. I can get worked up about a group or a nation just fine, but people... It's too much work to hate them one by one. See you later, Bull. Nice talking with you, boss. Heard what went on in that Fade thing. What you think went on. Can't even start to believe that business. I think a lot of people are having trouble with what went on there. People going on about visions and piss when real people are gone. Dead, probably. Hawk, yeah? Lost a champion. And in trade, a busted down bunch of wardens. And they're always weird. Usually, bad stuff happens first, so you're glad when the hero shows up. But wardens are the wrong way round. They're the good thing that means a bad thing is about to happen. Like in Denerim, when the blight ended. A lot happened in Denerim. What did you see? People talked a lot about this one warden. There was a big fight and they died or... I don't know, maybe they didn't. The hero of Ferelden. You forget the hero of Ferelden. That was ages ago, ten years. I was playing with small painted boxes and burying stuff I stole. I remember more people cringing about magic than blight. Wardens were an excuse for your stuff to go missing. Blackwall's nice though. Different from the adamant ones. Need more like him. Hey you, you have time? It's not a question, let's go. I've got something I want to do for you. Just come, you won't need your gear and stuff. <laughs> With you I'll do anything. I bet, yeah. Come on, let's do it. We're eating on a roof. They're horrible, right? And raisins, ugh. I freaking still hate cookies. You know, this is about as far from what I expected as we could get. I got caught stealing when I was little, yeah? You get alienage or worse for that, but the Lady Emold took me in. She was sick and couldn't have children. I had no parents. It worked out. Anyway, she gets a year sicker, so I ask her about cookies. 
because mums make cookies. I can pass that down or something. Turns out, she couldn't cook. She missed that talk with her mum. The ones she made, she bought and pretended. Ah, oh, right. Well, no, she was a bitch. She hid buying them by keeping me away from the baker. She did that by lying that he didn't like me, didn't like elves. She let me hate so she could protect her pride. I hated him so much and I hated... Well, she died. And I hate pride. Pride cookies. But this is great, you're great. So I thought maybe me and you could make some. I don't know, us cookies. Because then I could like them again. Oh, it's stupid. I don't understand. This Lady Emerald was just trying to be good to you. She hurt people. It was just cookies. It was not just cookies! Lie to herself, fair play, only hurts her. But she made me think there was something wrong with me. And the baker? I made his life shit. Why not? It seemed like he deserved it. I mean, if you don't give a child a cookie because of appearances, you're a monster. Stupid pride whore noble. I know, I said it was stupid. That's why I want to get rid of it. I want to make better cookies. You know what? That would be great. See, I knew. Wait, really? Because it seemed friggin' daft every step to me. Suppose it's not really about them. I hate learning lessons. Makes my stomach hurt. Anyway, I'll throw this rubbish away. Next time will be better, yeah? Sarah, any time. Can we get off the roof now? Oh, yes, please. It smells like bird and dank. This part, not a good idea. Thanks, yeah. Feels good, this. I'd like to know more about you, now that you're comfortable. Suppose. It's embarrassing enough now, may as well. Anything more to say about where you came from, aside from hating cookies there? Dinner in mostly before running into another Jenny. He was fun. Had weird friends, though. I think some of them were a lot more serious about being serious. Got some of them killed. I suppose they were like family. Better than Lady Emmold ever was. You know why? They didn't give two squirts about who or what you were. It was all what you did. So where are the rest of them? All over. Or they stopped to let new people go all over. Some get rich and stop playing so they can do good things with it. One or two don't. Eventually, someone asks for a favor against them. So don't get like that, you hear? Denerim is a long way from Orlais. How'd you get there? By stinky horse? Sarah. Denerim wasn't much fun after the blight. Everyone trying to recover, you even feel bad for the nobles. But Val Royo, that's a fat city full of fat heads. They just don't know when to stop. You saw it. Ole is rich and stupid. Right for the pickings. So is that who showed you how to fight? Gave you your skills? Nobody gave me anything except a chance. And maybe some lessons to start, but mostly just the chance. I took that and ran. Do you remember your actual family at all? Your parents? Well... There is the amulet I had as an orphan that has a missing piece, and look at your face! You believe me? No, still no parents. I remember an alienage with assholes and hating that stupid tree. The one elves always have. Of all the things to pray at, they could at least pick one with apples. It's nice to see this side of you, that you trust me. Don't you go blabbing around, yeah? Because I'll have a big trusting foot up your pucker. I think that, after our rooftop chat, I get why you're not like other elves. Well, don't. How about we dig into what you are? Or what you're supposed to be? Do you know all about elfiness? What it takes to keep our ears all perky? Because you could be more than just that. To me, anyway. Whatever I am to you, Sarah, that's all I need. Listen to you turning rubbish into butter. Right, Inquisitor. Leave it there, for now. We'll talk later. If you say so.
No. But you like demons. I enjoy the company of spirits, yes, which is part of why I do not abuse them with bindings. It isn't abuse if I ask. Not always true. Also, I do not practice blood magic, which renders this entire conversation academic. He won't bind me. He's a mage and he likes demons, but he won't help. We just saw the Grey Wardens try to raise an army of demons. You want Solus to bind you. He has to! If Solus won't do the ritual to bind me, someone else could. Will. Like the Warden Mages. And then... I'm not me anymore. Walls around what I want. Blocking, bleeding, making me a monster. A mage using blood magic could conceivably do that to any one of us, human or demon. You should ask Solus to bind you too, and then someone can bind him. We'll find a way to keep you safe without binding you, Cole. I have a suggestion, if Cole is ready to listen. I recall stories of amulets used by Ravani seers to protect spirits they summon from rival mages. A spirit? Wearing an amulet of the Unbound was immune to blood magic and binding. It should protect Cole as well. The resources of the Inquisition could be used to find such a talisman. Good. They will not take me. Inquisitor, if you're looking for the Commander, he's gone to speak with Seeker Pentagast. You asked for my opinion and I've given it. Why would you expect it to change? I expect you to keep your word. It's relentless. I can't... You give yourself too little credit. If I'm unable to fulfill what vows I kept, then nothing good has come of this. Would you rather save face than admit... We will speak of this later. And people say I'm stubborn. This is ridiculous. Cullen told you that he's no longer taking Lyrium? It seemed very important to him. It's not a decision to be made lightly. But now, Cullen has asked that I recommend a replacement for him. I refused. It's not necessary. Besides, it would destroy him. He's come so far. Why didn't he come to me? We had an agreement long before you joined us. As a seeker, I could evaluate the dangers. Cassandra, did you refuse Cullen's request because he's wrong, or because you want him to be wrong? Mages have made their suffering known, but Templars never have. They are bound to the Order, mind and soul, with someone always holding their Lyrium leash. Cullen has a chance to break that leash, to prove to himself, and anyone who would follow suit, that it's possible. He can do this. I knew that when we met in Kirkwall. Talk to him. Decide if now is the time. Make us breath. I didn't hear you enter. I... Forgive me. So long as you weren't aiming at me, I'm sure the box had it coming. I swear, I didn't know you were... <clears throat> oh. I never meant for this to interfere. Are you going to be all right? Yes. I don't know. You asked what happened to Ferelden's circle. It was taken over by abominations. The Templars, my friends, were slaughtered. I was tortured. They tried to break my mind, and I... <laughs> How can you be the same person after that? Still, I wanted to serve. They sent me to Kirkwall. I trusted my Knight Commander, and for what? Hmm? Her fear of mages ended in madness. Kirkwall's circle fell. 
innocent people died in the streets. Can't you see why I want nothing to do with that life? Of course I can. I... Don't. You should be questioning what I've done. I thought this would be better. That I would regain some control over my life, but these thoughts won't leave me. How many lives depend on our success? I swore myself to this cause. I will not give less to the Inquisition than I did to Chantry. I should be taking it. I should be taking it. You give enough, Cullen. I'm not asking you for more. The Inquisition can be your chance to start over, if you want it to be. I don't know if that's possible. It is. <sighs> All right. Someone I knew once described adamant to me. Adamant is, and always will be, the Order, he said. A guardian on the edge of the Abyss. The lone soul that stares into oblivion and doesn't waver. That's what Warden Commander Clorel tried to be. Well, they all tried to be. I'm told her Wardens never wavered. They went to their deaths, willingly. They died for... us. And Corypheus twisted their sacrifice to make it his own. And that's why he has to die. You'll get no argument from me. There's no one to blame but Corypheus. Even Clorel's intentions were righteous. Her desire to protect was so great it led her astray. It's not right. To want to do good, to be good, and have that turned against you. Don't think of what went wrong. Think of their intentions, their sacrifice. Honor their selflessness. Clorel made mistakes, but she was a great woman, and she died a great woman. It's not the armor or the trappings of the Order. It's not the... joining. At the heart of it, all a Warden is is a promise. To protect others, even at the cost of your own life. <laughs> 